The riverside town of Echuca is one of Victoria's most popular fishing destinations. But back in the 90s, Brian Woodbridge shifted his attention from catching Murray Cod to finding and breeding a not-so-beloved local creature. Brian, you've been a leech farmer for over 25 years. How on earth did you get started in this industry? Well, I had a background in uh, fish farming and yabbies, and uh, a friend of mine was at a, we were at a dinner party and there was a plastic surgeon there. And he said, do you ever come across leeches? And from there on, it's gone to ground to what it is now. During the 18th and 19th century, draining a patient's blood with leeches was thought to be an effective treatment for everything from cancer to epilepsy. Thankfully, these days, we know better. But it turns out leeches still have a valuable role to play in modern medicine. The leeches are fascinated animals. They have not only the ability to mechanically suck blood, but this saliva has many interesting properties. They have their own anesthetic component. They have their own anti-inflammatory component. And most importantly, they have a very powerful blood thinner. So they've got anesthetic, they've got anti-inflammatory and anti-coagulation properties. Correct. All in this one little critter. Correct. So this is Such unique properties surgery. make leeches an incredibly useful resource for reconstructive procedures at St Vincent's Hospital, Melbourne. The nurses here, they when patients undergo the surgery to reattach amputated fingers, toes and ears, yeah. these slippery suckers often play a crucial role in restoring blood flow. Mm -hmm. uh, my name's Alec Hyde and um, my thumb came off in a workplace accident. I was rushed straight to Sydney Hand and Eye Hospital where they reattached my thumb and after the surgery, I was informed that I'd need to put leeches on my thumb in order to help with the blood flow and circulation so that my thumb wouldn't die. My partner nearly fainted when she saw them putting leeches on my thumb and how they attached them and then the environment they enclosed them in so that they could feed on me. For us, the leeches are a last resource but a very valuable resource because those organisms can make the difference between selling a finger or failing to replant it. Do you consider them colleagues? Um, good friends. Good friends. <laughs> Demand for medicinal leeches is a lot higher than you might expect. Brian's business started out as a side gig, but today he supplies these parasitic worms to hospitals all over the country. We're probably selling in the last four or five years, five, six thousand leeches a year. And now I think they're probably, they're probably part of the plastic surgeon's toolbox. <laughs> and when you get the leeches, why do you put them in the trenches here? Why not take them straight to the tanks back at your house? Oh, when I breathe them, mm. they're only little loony tackers. Yeah. A couple of centimetres long. So I bring them out and I release them in there. Yeah. And 18 months, 12 months later, I'll come back and harvest them. Uh, so they spend about 12 months. So it's almost like mm. an incubation pond or something yeah. like that so they can get a bit bigger in here. Yeah. Slippery in there? Just the first step. Just the first bit, all right. While they're growing in this channel, Brian's leeches feed off the blood of fish, tadpoles, and just about anything they can latch onto. The leeches will Ooh. sense your uh, higher temperature and the movement in the water. A yep. single feed can sustain them for 12 months, so once they're big enough, they're kept away from fresh blood to ensure they're extra hungry before feeding on a patient. How many do you reckon we're going to find today? How many? Yep. Well, it's a bit like fishing. We might get a, a bucket full. Yep. Or we might get two. I can't promise that I'm not going to yelp if we find one. Oh, well. Oh! I think we got one! Yeah, Geronimo. You're Look at that! You're an expert. So talk me through the process of using a leech in a reconstructed procedure. When would you put it on? What would you do? We have to clean the area. So the leeches, they don't like the saline solution. They don't like antiseptic solution. They don't like dry blood. So we need to clean it in a way that they, they're comfortable. And then we identify the place where we want them to, to latch. And then we make a little prick in that area and they start doing the job. <laughs> so yeah, it's just been under a year now since the incident has happened and the thumb's been reattached and my little leech buddies have helped my thumb survive. I don't think for a second that if someone has an option to 
get help regardless of the creatures they might put on you uh, to take it. And I have a newfound respect for leeches now. I have had stories of them being used on children that get their fingers caught in bike spokes and dogs chewing their ears and things like that, where they've got to replace all the ear. And that's sort of rewarding when you read things like that. So how many patients do you think your leeches have helped over the years? Well, over the 20, 30 years that we've been doing it, it would be thousands. Well, it doesn't look like this little fella is actually that hungry at the moment. But it is amazing to think that these creatures have such a symbiotic relationship with humans. They can drink our congested blood, they can thin it, and even provide some local anaesthetic. In fact, they're doing what modern medicine can't do, and they've been doing it for thousands of years. <laughs>